this interview, I speak with Erin. She's 28 years old and lives in New York City. She shares what it's like working as an environmental health and safety consultant. Let's get started. Hi, Erin. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to hear about your career as an environmental health and safety consultant. So thanks so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So right off the bat, can you give me like a blanket kind of definition of what your career as an EHS consultant is like? Sure, yeah. So um, I work in New York City, as you mentioned, an environmental health and safety consultant. And what that generally entails is working for a very wide range of clientele and providing external environmental health and safety compliance solutions. So it can range from project-based work, from routine, you know, several years of managing their environmental health and safety programs and the industries can range from manufacturing to healthcare to higher education, laboratory space, so research and development, and now very much kind of sectoring into the world of life science. So heading in the biotech sphere, which has been very exciting. Okay, cool. And now I'm assuming there might be some overlap with recent, you know, COVID related things. Have you worked at all on safety precautions with COVID? Absolutely. Yes. But I kind of joke that that was like the time of job security for me, where it became really clear for a lot of industries that protecting their workers from health and safety issues was critical. And so particularly, as you could assume in the healthcare sector, um, there's a lot of requirements for companies to provide a safe working environment for their employees. And with an emerging pandemic, you have a lot of shifting guidelines from, you know, consensus standards like the CDC to government with, you know, regulations coming in for workplace safety. And so navigating that was definitely challenging, but really kind of enlightening to see how quickly changing and adapting the industry needs to be to ensure that employees can get home safe, essentially. So like you said, there's a lot of adaptability, obviously in recent times. Are there any particular skills besides the hard maybe degrees or certifications, which I'm sure we'll get into, that are helpful for individuals interested in this career to have? I think that one kind of just like general skill that came in handy was communication. I think a lot of what I do is I help talk to people about scary parts of their job, parts of their job that make them anxious and nervous. And I think really understanding how to protect yourself when there isn't a safety consultant there to provide that is really important. So communicating these tools for you know employees that they can take with them and utilize every single day in their workplace and communicating it in a way that's not so scary and high level and overwhelming, but more just human. So people can understand, okay, it's really not that complicated, but here's what you need to do to protect yourself, to protect your colleagues. And I think that goes a really long way. Um, obviously, understanding the complexities of the industry and the regulations helps quite a bit, but I think communication is probably the sole tool that helps to uh, get into that uh, level of detail. That's awesome. I think communication is probably a highly underrated skill across a lot of different professions. So I'm glad that you called that out because I'm sure. As you said, it's a big part of this one. Um, so backtracking a little bit, can you tell me a little bit about how you got to where you are today, how you found out about this as a career and maybe your education journey? Yeah, so I graduated from Binghamton University. Um, I graduated with an environmental resource management degree that's actually under the geography major. So I kind of found my way into that degree a bit randomly. I moved around quite a bit during my undergrad, not really deciding what I wanted to do until maybe junior year, which they tell you not to do, but it worked just fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then when I graduated, I was kind of just looking for jobs in the industry. A lot of my internships had been with nonprofits and I really liked the activism aspect of environmental compliance, but more so kind of environmental policy and how we can enact change from a very high level. And so the boots on the ground organizing was really interesting, but I wanted to delve into a different aspect of the industry. And I actually met with a family friend in my hometown in New Milford, Connecticut, and they showed me around a water 
it was kind of a paper mill. So paper processing with water and pulp. And it was a really high level overview of what the environmental health and safety industry looked like and how they comply with local regulations and how they keep their workers safe because it's a very dangerous industry, which I didn't really know too much about. And um, they kind of gave me scope into that. And I, I signed up for this newsletter called EHS Careers um, per his recommendation. And this company, Triumvirate Environmental came up uh, to work as an environmental specialist for them. And so I started with them just over five years ago, a bit more than five years ago, yeah, um, as an environmental specialist, which was one of the craziest jobs I think I've ever had. Uh, it was conducting hazardous waste operations for the same clientele I'm working with now, um, assisting with hazardous chemical spill response, chemical explosions um, in New York City. It was a lot of emergency response. It required that I drive a truck filled with hazardous waste on a daily basis. And so there were a lot of parts of the job that I was like, I did not fully know what I was getting myself into, but I just rolled with the punches because I saw the path that the company could kind of guide me towards. And it, it ended up being a good investment of my time and a pretty remarkable learning experience, all things considered. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> did you have or did you develop any like working relationships or mentorships that kind of help you saw that path with your company? Because it really isn't that common, I feel like these days or for our generation to stay with the same company and evolve with it. So I, I would love to hear about that. Yeah. So I had a mentor. I've had two mentors with the company and then one informal mentor who's been a client of mine actually for about three years now. So my, my mentors with the company have been in very different um, parts of the company, just to kind of familiarize myself with the business operations and things like that, that I really know very little about, um, but I'm trying to learn more about. And then my more informal mentor is a client of mine who has been in the industry for 40 plus years and just knows everything that there is to know about environmental health and safety and has been guiding me through this process when in you know reality he's the client I should be assisting him but <laughs> he's been a really amazing teacher and he works as the director for environmental health and safety for a major hospital in New York City so what he sees and what he's done and you know his interaction with this industry has been pretty remarkable and so it's been great to learn kind of from someone who has so much industry experience. That's awesome. So in a way, it sounds like you kind of fell into this career, but not really. You've, you've been on a trajectory. Do you have any colleagues that um, are career changers or maybe they had a less direct path? Like, have you heard of other ways to kind of end up where you're at? Actually, it is a very, there. it is a direct path for some people. So I didn't know this until I joined the industry, but there are a lot of undergraduate programs for occupational health science, for environmental and occupational health science, for environmental health and safety. I didn't know that. So a lot of the people who joined with me as environmental specialists and now even environmental health and safety consultants, a lot of them studied in their undergraduate program this industry. And so they know about these regulations already. They knew about what this looked like in the workforce. And a more common path, I think, for people, um, because I went straight from, you know, providing environmental specialist services, which is, again, more boots on the ground kind of role. And I mean that literally, I wore steel toe boots every day to work. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think a more common route is to work for internal EHS. So to start working for a uh, entry level role at a hospital or a manufacturing plant or um, even an institution like New York University or Columbia University, they need, uh, you know, environmental health and safety specialists as well. And so I think more commonly than jumping right into external EHS and consulting is to work internally and kind of work your way up within that way. Okay, that's good to know. Awesome. Um, so I think I would love to hear a little bit more about any on-the-job learning that's been more formal. I saw recently on LinkedIn that you earned a certification. So if you could talk about that, it'd be great. 
Yeah, absolutely. My company has been amazing in providing me with a multitude of different regulatory trainings. So there's a lot of different trainings and certifications that you should keep up if you want to go into this industry that your company will more likely than not provide for you because it's the law to have this <laughs> on an annual basis. Sometimes it's like semi-annual. Um, that being said, like it, you know, there's a lot of different OSHA training that's Occupational Safety and Health Administration. There's a lot of Environmental Protection Agency training on hazardous waste management, Department of Transportation hazardous material shipping training. So this is where we come in with providing assistance and where the regulations get really complicated, where if companies do not comply, it can become very costly mm -hmm. and challenging just from a business operation standpoint. So to ensure your employees are trained is very important. Uh, the certification you mentioned is a certified industrial hygienist. That is a certification that I have been studying for for about nine months. So that was pretty exciting. Wow. Um, yeah. And it's definitely a really um, challenging arc to have attempted, but it was very exciting to have that checked off my list. That's one of the major uh, certifications in my industry. Other major certifications are certified safety professional, a certified hazardous materials manager, CHMM or CSP. Those are like, those are kind of the three big certifications, I would say. So depends on kind of what your niche is, right? So if you're more interested in hazardous materials management, CHMM, if you love OSHA, CSP, if you really like environmental toxicology, radiation, ventilation, engineering controls to protect people from hazardous environments, that's gonna be certified industrial hygienist. So it, it very much depends on the niche that you want to go into. And that was kind of where from a consulting standpoint, it definitely, the way that they describe the certified industrial hygienist is, or you have to know a little about a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they pose it. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's really incredible. Congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, so I think I would just like to wrap things up and ask you if you have any advice for any high school, college students, maybe even career changers, who are potentially interested in exploring this career, whether it's, you know, doing, doing a certification or getting a certain degree first or just researching other podcasts and blogs, whatever. Right. I think that historically this industry has been kind of seen as a afterthought. So you report up to a manager, but you're not really reporting up to like the top of the hierarchy of like a company or an institution. But in the past 10 years, it's changed quite a bit where companies said, you know, we need to really value the safety of our employees. We need to show them that we're taking actionable steps to create and maintain a safe environment from like a toxicology standpoint. We need to make sure that we're not creating a harmful environment with discharges to the atmosphere, to water bodies that we're properly disposing of things like pharmaceutical waste, hazardous waste, radioactive waste, and so on. And so I think this combination of, of worker protection and environmental stewardship at the forefront of the industry is really changing the environmental health and safety industry because you're no longer, a lot of the directors now for the institutions, at least in New York City, which is what I can speak to, um, for environmental health and safety, they report directly to the C-suite now, and they make sure to kind of integrate these goals very much into the day-to-day -day business operations. Uh, so I think what I've noticed in the short time that I've been a part of this industry is that it's changing very quickly, and it's becoming very much prioritized in a lot of businesses, and especially with covid and following kind of the scare of what do we do if something like this happens again? Yeah. It really highlights the importance for the industry. And with that evolving, with that changing, I think it's a really exciting time to join the ranks of environmental health and safety. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just understand that it's going to be evolving as we learn more about more about how to be better stewards to the environment and how to be more thoughtful about protecting people who are choosing to work in dangerous industries. Yeah, 
That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. I um, I did plan on actually making like a projected what are some hot careers over the next five years. And I think you definitely are going to make the list there with <laughs> EHS because I, I completely, being completely on the outside of this industry, see that trajectory happening. Um, so I just wanted to thank you again for taking so much time to share your expertise and your insight. And thanks. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it.